Chapter 4 Sorting Materials into Groups Objects around us You see a large number of things around you. Some of the common things that you see in your classroom are desks, chairs, teacher's table, blackboard, doors, fans, water bottles and pencil box. You see things like toys, mobiles, gloves, clothes, shoes and many other objects in your home. All these things are of different shapes, sizes and colors. They are made from different materials and have different uses. In order to understand the things around us, it is necessary to classify them into groups. Material A substance or a thing which is used in the making of different objects is called material. All the objects are made of one or more kinds of material. For example, a chair is made of wood, so wood is a material. A spoon is made of steel, so Steel is a material. Some more examples of materials are cotton, silk, coal, iron, plastic and glass. Materials are generally of two types. Natural materials and man-made materials. For example, wood is obtained from nature. So, wood is a natural material. Plastic is made in factories, so it is a man-made material. An object made of different materials. The same object may be made of different materials. For example, a plate is an object that is used in our daily life. A plate may be made of different materials like plastic, glass, stainless steel, brass and silver. Different types of objects made of same material. Plastic is a material. It can be used to make different kinds of objects. For example, it can be used to make objects like toys, utensils, bags, mugs, tumblers, buckets and toothbrushes. Properties of materials We use metals like steel or aluminium to make utensils for cooking purposes but we will never use paper for making such utensils because paper utensils will catch fire when placed on the burner or gas stove. Hence we choose a material to make an object depending on its properties and the purpose for which the object is to be used. In this context, let us read about some important properties of materials. Appearance Materials usually look different from each other. Sand looks very different from wood. Wood appears quite different from plastic. Plastic looks different from aluminium. Aluminium looks different from cotton. At the same time, there are some similarities between sand, wood, plastic and cotton that are not there in aluminium. The property of a material with a shining surface is called luster, chamak. Materials like iron, copper and aluminium which have luster shining surface are called lustrous materials. Materials like paper, wood, plastic and cotton which do not have luster are called non-lustrous materials. Activity 5 To separate shiny materials 
from a group of materials. Things needed Wood piece Copper wire Piece of cotton Paper Iron rod Rubber Aluminium rod and sandpaper. Method Rub the surface of each material with sandpaper. Observe each material whether shining or not shining. Separate the shining material from the non-shining material. Observation The surfaces of materials like iron rod, aluminium and copper wire are shining. Surface of materials like wood piece, paper piece and cotton are not shining. Hardness When we press a piece of cotton with our fingers, it gets pressed easily. Materials that can be compressed easily are called soft materials. Foam, melted wax and sponge are some examples of soft materials. But if we try to compress or cut an iron nail, we cannot do so. Materials that cannot be compressed easily are called hard materials. Most metals such as iron Copper and aluminium are hard. Because of this quality of hardness, metals are used to make household utensils and factory equipment. Solubility Take a glass or a beaker and fill it half with water. Add half a spoonful of sugar in it. Stir the contents with the spoon. Wait for a few minutes and observe it you will find that the sugar has disappeared into water. This shows that sugar has dissolved in water or that sugar is soluble in water. If we taste this water, it is sweet. Why? Because the sugar is still there in the water, but its particles have become so small and spread uniformly in water that we cannot see them. Now, Take another beaker and fill it half with water. Add half a spoonful of sand in it. Stir the contents with a spoon and observe it. We find that the sand settles down at the bottom of the beaker. The sand does not disappear in water. We can say that sand does not dissolve in water. Solubility of solids in water Substances that dissolve when mixed with water are said to be soluble in water, whereas the substances that do not dissolve in or mix with water are insoluble in water. Transparency Hold a glass tumbler in front of your eyes. See through it. You can see all the objects around you. This happens because glass is a transparent material. So. Materials through which we can see the objects clearly are called transparent materials. And this property of the materials is called transparency. Some more examples of transparent materials are water, alcohol, air and cellophane paper. Some kind of plastic bottles are also transparent. Shopkeepers usually prefer to keep biscuits, sweets and other eatables in transparent glass and transparent plastic containers so that buyers can easily see these items. Thus, materials through which we cannot see objects clearly are called opaque materials. And this property of the materials is called opaqueness. We keep our things in closed iron almirahs so that they cannot be seen. Cardboard Metals, wall and wood are some examples of opaque objects. If we hold a butter paper in front of our eyes, we can see partially through it. So, butter paper is a translucent material. Those materials through which we can see the objects partially are called 
translucent materials and this property of the material is called translucency. Grounded glass, frosted glass, tissue paper, dust laden air, fog and mist are some translucent materials. To observe the solubility of various solid substances in water. Things needed. Five test tubes, test tube stand, water, common salt, chalk powder, plastic, copper sulphate, washing soda. Method Take the test tubes and fill half of each of them with water. Add a small amount, half a spoonful of common salt to the first test tube. Similarly, add the same amount of chalk powder in the second test tube. Plastic in the third test tube. Copper sulphate crystals in the fourth test tube and washing soda in the fifth test tube. Shake each test tube vigorously and keep in the test tube stand. Observe them after a few minutes. What do you observe? Observation you observe that the common salt, copper sulphate crystals and washing soda dissolve in water, whereas chalk powder and plastic do not dissolve in water. Activity 7 To observe the solubility of various liquids in water. Things needed 5 test tubes Test tube stand Water Glycerin Kerosene oil, vinegar, mustard oil, alcohol, dropper. Method Take the test tubes and fill half of each of them with water. Add some glycerin drops to the first test tube. Similarly, add a few drops of kerosene oil in the second test tube. A few drops of vinegar in the third test tube. A few drops of mustard oil in the fourth test tube. And a few drops of alcohol in the fifth test tube. Shake each test tube vigorously and place it in the test tube stand. Allow the test tubes to stand for some time and observe. Observation. You observe that liquids like glycerine, vinegar and alcohol have completely mixed with water to form a single layer. We say that glycerine, vinegar and alcohol dissolve or are soluble in water. We can also say that they are miscible in water. We will observe that liquids like kerosene, oil and mustard oil do not get mixed with water. They form separate layers. We will see two separate layers of water and kerosene oil in the second test tube. Water being heavier forms the lower layer in the test tube whereas kerosene oil forms the upper layer in the test tube. We say kerosene oil and mustard oil are insoluble in water or immiscible in water.